Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where today, well, to be honest, I've got a bit of a list on to, to get going on with. Um, so, last episode we placed down, um, if we just wait for the loading screen, uh, we placed down uh, Gleetis Klingon, well, we didn't place it, we put it in orbit around the moon, um, and we will be doing at least one landing with that in a, in a bit. But I want to get a couple of building things out of the way because I've got um, a couple of things on my mind, basically. Um, first thing, as soon as this loads, is over here on my alarm clock, uh, we have a Moho encounter is, is the next one to deal with. I mean, I know it's still 100 days off. And I'm not sure how much of that we're going to be doing at real time and how much we're going to be uh, doing under time acceleration. But as that is ne my next viable target, uh, we'll be doing that. Now, the problem that I have with that is that my science is lacking in the high efficiency department if you'll note i have my um atomic rocket over here um but i was looking through uh gene's panel here well um and here this allows me to uh to, to go off and test uh, the atomic rocket motors which means I can sneakily get one onto a probe before I actually use it. As long as I put this up into orbit within two, uh, well, within three days. I oh, know, minutes. Okay. Well, within two and a bit days, um, do the test. I can then use the whatever just happens to be attached to that to send to Moho. So I'm going to be making a Moho probe. Probe. And the other thing, uh, did well, I have the claw? Did I get the claw? I didn't get the claw. So the other thing is, we're going to be getting some XP to get the claw so that we can go... Well, that's what the Moho probe will, um, science will be used for. There's a hundred and odd science on that. And we'll use that to buy the claw so we can go out and get a um, an asteroid. Now, I've not really been looking for asteroids at the moment, so that might actually be the one of the first things I do. Um, there are a lot out and about. I reckon this one got a B class oh that's almost perfect let's, let's follow that um, can, we, can we say that from here uh, da -da -da. track perfect how long have we got until an encounter I don't know if it comes within the sphere of influence or not well we'll have to go find out on that right yeah so I'm gonna go uh, think about how I'm gonna build this moho probe and then I'll get back to you so what do we have here um, possibly the wrong design now that I think about it because this needs to be tested in orbit but we'll figure we'll probably just stick another one down somewhere else this is my moho probe as simple as it is uh, literally it is um, a collection of all the sciences uh, and when I say all the sciences I, I do mean all of them there's even an atmospheric gauge there I, like we're never gonna need it but you know it's the condom principle right I'd, ra I'd rather have it and not need it than others you know so what else we got um, batteries here to keep it alive, uh, solar panels top and bottom because I still don't have the uh, thermal generator which means I kind of have to rely on these before I can rely on, on the, the covered ones here that require uh, deploying because the main problem is I always forget to deploy stuff until, oh I don't know, halfway around my orbit and then I'm like well I've got no power to deploy these, this is no good uh, and yeah that's about it uh, all that really ma remains is to throw a, uh, a, a beefy lifter underneath this. Um, in fact, I think we're probably going to have an interplanetary stage here and then a beefy lifter under that. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. Right, so, uh, yeah, I'll see you when I've done that. So you'll notice that I uh, deviated from the plan almost immediately. There is no interplanetary stage there. Instead, I opted for the uh, strapping more fuel tanks to the engine that's already there option. Uh, I just thought it'd be uh, slightly more efficient for a Moho probe. Uh, it could take everything with it and, and not have this bulky middle stage. So it kind of really messed up the, uh, the, the different contracts that I had. Um, another way that I deviated from my standard plan is there are no solid boosters on this vessel. Um, it was a bit of a gamble and it paid off. Um, I mean, to be fair, I had a mainsail and then two of, uh, and then six of these big two-engine. I can never remember the, the numbers for them, but yeah, the the, the, the two-engine ones. Uh, I was fairly confident of getting up into orbit. The bit of this mission that I am not fairly confident about is uh, whether there is enough fuel around that probe to get it to Moho. Uh, I have no intention of uh, trying to stop a Moho. Uh, I've got just enough science to do a single pass, maybe get all the uh, the high altitude science. I don't know if there's a high and low for Moto, but there, uh, Mo, Moho. Yeah, I lost that for a moment. Um, 
but you know there's there's at least one set of space science that this um probe will be doing and then hopefully if at all possible we'll be swinging back via Kerbin um and having a little pickup or at least a a, a deep space rendezvous um and maybe go yeah go do something something about that but anyway we're just coming up to a, a circularization burn uh and i was all a fluster at this point because i'd managed that i uh, noticed that i'd managed to get my apple apps well above the uh, altitudes that my site well i say the sciencing that my contracts needed to do the testing of the parts um but it was all right just a a little bit of generous thrust pointed downwards um brought everything into line and then i just made sure my path uh periaps was all right and to be honest i just had to get things done on this bottom swing by um and then i had other more important things to worry about the major thing of course is to uh, remember to get all my contracts done uh, just quickly check the fuel situation everything is a-okay and then moved over to the the contracts and started figuring out which one which order i needed to do these in um set up my staging and boom first one was done second one got us a nice explosion fire up my engines uh, and now i have non something that was probably not actually an issue but something that i could see being a future issue as this is going to be in orbit for 169 days that fuel tank is now going to stay in orbit because i have no way of getting it back i didn't put a pro body on it though that would have been clever if i thought about it that far ahead but anyway that's what i could have done so what i'm going to do is just spend a little time um messing around with the orbit that this craft is in just so it's not in the same way i'm just going to push it up literally on on both uh, at both peri apps and apple apps just to to give it a larger orbit so it will um, go around faster slower sorry but speed is irrelevant because the whole point was that it was going to be in a larger orbit rather than the one inside so their orbit orbital paths will never cross and there's no chance of collision and all the explosions that are going to happen on this mission have already happened right hopefully well that's the plan anyway and as I'm hoping you have all got that jarbled mess that I tried to explain what my plan was, we're going to go back to the uh, the spaceport because we don't we don't need to actually watch me do that. You, you've all got the idea. Right. Well, that was fun. Uh, something that I'd done off camera is if we look over here, uh, I did this whole uh, science from Kerb in space. It got me a little bit of a um, little bit of credit and a single point of science, which was like obviously the more important thing to do there. Right. So the first thing I really want to do. Um, with all that science we got is by this this claw because something we're going to do between putting uh, Jeb down on the mun and sending that uh, that uh, what was it called probe off to Moho is set up some sort of uh, asteroid if not capture at least go and have a look at it stick a claw in see what we can do uh, I've still not gone and picked exactly which which uh, asteroid we're going to go for but that's mainly because we're going to go um, is go pop down Cletes Klingon Cletes Klingon sometimes that's really hard to pronounce okay so we are in almost darkness uh, we should really first things first sort out where we're going to land um, I don't think the dark side of the moon's a really good choice um, so if we come over here uh, have I done this crater already? Uh, see, now we have a bit of an issue. Which crater have we done? Which one have we done? Okay, so I am going to figure out which crater I've been in. If I've been in that one, I'm going to put down in that one. And I think this is also the canyon. So what we might do is crater, canyon, and then lowlands. Because I've got three bits of science on there, haven't we? Okay, yeah. Okay, we're going to take a small jump cut where I'm probably going to come back with uh, this guy on his own in a slightly lower orbit passing over here. Okay, so I've had a look around. Ooh, and the main thing I've noticed is that I've got a flag here, which I presume tells me where my first mission landed. So, oh, I wish... I wish I could get these bits to go away. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm trying to put down in this crater here because it's a nice, nice, uh, easy pa uh, uh, landing spot. And then I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm liking the amount I've turned. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of this uh, maneuver node. What we're going to do is just uh, try and decelerate over the top of this um, and bring my orbit down as low as possible over the top of that uh, without any inclination change. There's no need for an inclination change, I don't think. Um, and once we're down over the top of it, we can, uh, there we go, that, that looks good. Look, crashing into the far side of that particular crater should mean that I have a beautiful spot to be um, landing on. All right, so we are literally just um, just at the side of Gleety, 
Gleety here. I, I'm not sure if this is Gleety and this is the Klingon or, or what. I, I haven't really planned uh, the names out all that much. Uh, I just know that this is the landing. Uh, so we've got five minutes to wait. Let's just uh, cruise around. Ooh. Ooh, that's an oversight. Well, it looks like we're going to have to be doing a, a horrendous um, monoprop-less landing at some point. But let's wait until we come round back into the daylight so we can see what's going on. Uh, get some electric charge on the go, point my ship in the right direction, and then we're going to... Oh, wait. Okay, turn the lights off. Uh, now what I'm trying to do is uh, detect the edge of the crater. Um, if we come out here and have a look... Yeah, look. Um, it's really hard to see. You see, see this crater wall here. It's really undefined, um, which is annoying. Well, it's not annoying. It's inconvenient, shall we say? Uh, but I think I'm literally just about to pass over the crater wall. Uh, somewhere about here. Let's um, let's check our crew report and see see what it tells us. Uh, <laughs> in space near the moon. No, that's that's not what we want at all, is it? Uh, I am going to swap my vehicle's orientation to something like this because it, I don't know, it just feels better having down being down. Uh, pop out some landing gear and get ready to do our thing. Uh, how high up are we? We are below. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? We are below mountain height. And, oh yeah, this looks perfect. Let's put down at this nice flat bit here. Uh, so if we're aiming for a horizontal velocity close to zero, um, basically we want this to be pointing upwards, this um, retrograde marker to be up near the top. Um, and it's taking a lot. Ooh, it's taking a lot more fuel than I thought it would. Uh, looks like we're actually going to be down somewhere near half fuel levels when we're done. It's not great. It's not great. Um, it. it decreases the utility of this vehicle somewhat but that's okay we can we can we can deal with that right now i feel like i'm coming down pretty hard so we're gonna do this and just just try and nullify everything down uh i would actually kind of like to go iva at this point and see how far away my uh radar altimeter is saying but man uh, whatever um i can't seem to spot there's my shadow okay with a shadow there oh wow the sun is directly above us is it okay well with the shadow there we should be able to uh get some sort of idea of how far away from the floor we are um or we could just watch that rock over there once again press the wrong button this is all right this is all easily dealt with um i'm not sure how fast we need to be coming down at um i always like to go for less than three meters per second but that's kind of like curbing velocity if you see what i'm saying uh Oh, that's all right. We'll just. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This feels fast. This feels very fast. Two, three, two, one. Ah, perfect. How is that for a put down? We are very short on fuel, though. Get a crew report. Um, East crater. So we did indeed end up somewhere where somewhere different. That's good. Uh, I was really quite worried that we were going to end up. Um, in the same place as we did last time the far side crater uh, which is incidentally what I had found out where I had found out we'd been before uh, I didn't do the canisters and stuff but that's okay because I'm about to uh, go get a soil sample plant myself a flag what are we gonna call this one not enough fuel fuel, fuel. Uh, for science ba -ba -bum. This is, uh, is going to have to be a test mission for two reasons. Uh, one is that we are nearly out of fuel, and the second is that I forgot my monoprop. So I think we are almost good to... Uh, oh yeah, we are perfect for starting again. Right, let's get the orbital map. Let's set this as target. And let's go. It's pretty good. I don't think we're going to get a perfect match straight away, but we are definitely going to try and stop that there. Uh, maybe a little bit further. 18.5 kilometers can we get that closer no we can only get that further away like that that's okay though that's that's nay biggie so out of sync okay let's let's slow this down i feel like we're about to lose jeb to deep space um so there's an orbit there let's let's just follow the target marker and, and see what happens i mean we're definitely gonna uh, 60 50 40 30 that's now we want to do we want to push that that way i can never remember if we can get those markers lining up then i think everything should be good but we are down to five units of fuel which is not 
great. Right, are we in a stable orbit? Are we in an orbit that we can we can deal with? Six kilometers. Six kilometers is all right. Um, it's not quite the orbit I was looking for, but I think we'll live with this. Mainly, I want to get these as close together as possible. I mean, 85. I mean, we are we are losing him here basically, uh, and we're always going to be trailing him. I think. So let's just buzz round and see what we can do. In fact, this is going to have to be a uh, a timed thing, right? So let's add maneuver in here, collapse that back down, and see what happens over the next couple of orbits. Yeah, we definitely end up losing it um, no matter how far away we go so let's cancel that and put in another maneuver now is that all right can we do that 7.3 no that's too far can we can we get closer than that like there 11.9 6.3 i think that's going to have to do um now i I don't like how little fuel we have left. This is definitely uh, not the ship for the Mun. May maybe we should push these guys back out to Minmus. Um, I, I, this is definitely more of a Minmus mission. Um, yeah, I just, this is just not beefy enough. Is what it what it boils down to. This this craft just doesn't have doesn't have the cuts bar to do what I need it to do, um, which is a little bit annoying. Okay, right, here goes. Uh, let's use our map screen because this is the one we need to use. Um, and I would like to actually try and get this as close as possible because the, the more accurate we are here, the better it's gonna be. And I, we are gonna be lost in space, aren't we? This is uh, not ideal. It's got to be said, not ideal. Um, I mean, I know we've got lots of time to kill before our next mission, so you know, it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, if I had a little bit of mono, a little bit more monoprop, I'd actually use this here. But as we don't, I'm not uh, zero meters per second. That, that seems close enough to me. I'm sure there's a floating point there that's not quite right. But right there we go. Slow right down. We're, we are within five minutes of the target. Which is quite quite a distance away, to be fair. Um, but we want to be thinking about how to make these closer together. Um, maybe this is the time to be using a little bit of monoprop. Now, to make that more efficient, I'm going to turn my SAS off because monoprop will just constantly be trying to correct. Okay, uh, push, no, pull. Something like that. Turn that back off. It's pretty close. Is that even closer? 3.4 meters. Yeah, we're getting there. We're, we're definitely getting there. Um, if I could just again monoprop. Uh, oh, we used it all just in that tiny little pop. Oh, I barely pressed it. Now that is very awkward. Okay, so here goes. Uh, we're at target, what we want to do is swing round towards our slowdown from target. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not feeling overly great about how this is going, it's got to be said, but we will definitely get closer, um, closer to our maximum uh, encounter, or maximum encounter, closest encounter, I, mean, I don't know, however you want to want to word this particular thing, we're getting real close, let's get rid of this manoeuvre, alright, and then we're just going to be as fine as possible with this. 654, um, something like that. Uh, now, which way is that? So, because we want to also at the same time actually make an impact on the direction we're moving, I'm going to do that like this. Oh, 2.4. Is this the direction I actually want to be going? I think so. I think so. 4.9. We're at 2.9 kilometer close getting closer if we could just ooh, overdone it overdone it all right well that's that's about as close as we can get there i think we're just gonna have to wait until we are drifting in as close as possible uh, i'm not sure if gleety actually has anything on it that would um help this situation um I'd like to think that it does but i, I, I don't know uh, 2.4 and 0 0.7 that's perfect look at that that's that's within 700 meters of each other can we push it any closer 0 0.6 0 0.5 i just want to ease down by the smallest amount every time mainly so we don't waste any fuel okay there so that's that's the closest one we're going to get over there 
Um, these are actually going to be further apart, but when we are here, uh, here, we we should start about it. so ten minutes. Okay, and yeah, this is just going to be a slow, slow case of drifting in now. I think um, we've <laughs> already recorded far more than I was hoping to record. Okay, that is going to have to do like that. We are pointing that towards. Swap over. We are almost entirely have already almost entirely gone round a whole orbit but that's all right you know these things do work like that okay so we are faced in roughly the right direction uh, we're gonna have to now hopefully just kind of ease ourselves in like that I don't appear to be moving in the right direction according to the nav ball um, that's, that's close to the right direction there we go if we could just do that we should hopefully, if things go well, float on in there. Now, the problem we've got is we're about to run out of sunlight. And that is a bit inconvenient. Right, 17 kilometers. Let's push our nose down just the smallest amount. Is this, uh, not 17 kilometers, 17 meters. Now, hopefully, this should be right. Let's turn off the SAS. Let's Oh no no let's not turn SAS off that was oh no oh no it's not what we need it's not what we need it's not what we need at all is it okay let's push that over that way and hopefully we can use our front end to push against this and hopefully if the magnetic gods are with us isn't this right? What's wrong? What is wrong? I can't I can't actually see. There we go. That's what we want. Do it. Ah. Oh. Well, Thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I will see you next time where we're going to try and fix this. Um, I should also point out that I've done some Delta V calculations for the uh, well diver back in orbit around Kerbin. Turns out we are not going to be able to stop at Moho, but we are going to be able to do a flyby, which is all good. Yeah, so I will see you next time where we're going to do something. Else. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, but we will definitely do that thing that I'm not sure about. Bye! <laughs>